Hi everybody. In this video I want to continue along with my general principle video on hive inspections. So in the first part of the video I explained to you that uh, what you're looking for in a hive are three things. You're looking to see if they're queen right, you're looking to see what the brood pattern's like, both solid, uh, solid or spotty, and then the third thing is the overall strength of the colony and if they have the resources they need. So focusing on that one leg, the first thing you need to know is, is if they're queen right or queen less. So some of, some of the beekeepers watching this channel don't know how to find a queen, uh, at least not consistently. So I'm going to show you a process on how to find a queen. The process is built on premises that you need to understand beforehand. So I want you to first envision that this is a tree and not a Langstroth hive. It's a tree and there's a cavity this big in that tree. Uh, a normal wild colony of European honeybees and it's European honeybees that everybody keeps in, in America and throughout most of the world. European honeybees evolved, if you want to use that word, in places of the world where it was cold. It's also cold here. So a normal hive configuration, if this is a tree, let's say it changes during the season. So let's say we're going into winter. All this area up here, if you can imagine combs going from here all the way down and is back, back as far as this, that, that long and that deep, all these combs hanging down, all this up here is gonna be honey. And even on the sides, it's gonna be honey. And there's going to be a section in the center. And remember, we're talking three-dimensional. So from the front to the back, where there might be brood. Around the brood, there will be pollen. And, so, and one of these frames will contain some honey in it. So the brood is always going to be here, and it's going to be surrounded by honey. They do that for a few reasons. One, honey is a good insulator. So if, if the brood is between frames of honey on either side, it takes it takes longer for that hive to cool down and when they radiate heat it takes less energy to to keep the brood at a steady rate because honey's a good insulator having that on the sides um, but they always keep honey above the second reason they do that is so that when it when winter comes and we're talking you know in the fall ready for winter right now as they as the brood hatches out they they creep up the frames they crawl up they don't, they can't go from, these are all frames or combs hanging straight down. And in order for them to move to another frame or comb in their hive, they're going to have to crawl all the way down around and over. And so what they like to do is have a section of brood. And as that brood starts hatching out, they'll slowly creep up into the honey section. And as they eat the honey, they'll lay eggs in there and their brood pattern will eventually crawl up the hive. And when they need to, they'll switch over to another frame. When, when it's a warmer day where they can break cluster, they'll switch around to another neighboring frame on the outside. So they're still covering the brood that's in the center, but the bees from over here basically went from over here to here. It's actually is, is a rotation, but that's essentially what's happening. So they're crawling up a hive. That's a natural beehive. You have honey above, you have brood down in the center, and you have pollen lining the brood around in between that and the honey. That's a natural colony. Langstroth hives were built off that natural colony. So a lot of people seem to think that they'll have brood over here and they'll have honey over here and they'll go sideways. But in a natural colony, they can't do that in the winter because they have to crawl all the way down and around to get to that. Here's a quick example of what might happen in the winter. You have a brood cluster down below and you have honey up above. That's the way bees like to go into winter. And the reason they like that is because they have a long way to travel upwards before they have to move side to side, which is something they do not like to do at all. Through the winter, the brood creeps up the frames and they leave empty comb behind. 
and they use the as the they use the honey resources. They then as that cell is emptied, the queen will lay some brood in there, and they'll just kind of creep up the frame. So as this as the hive transitions from winter to spring, you'll see empty comb below, brood in the middle, honey up on top in an ideal situation. As the hive transitions from spring to summer, so this is late spring, early summer, brood just takes over. This is also when they're, they're, they start to swarm. Their brood takes so much of their resources that they're, you, you don't see a lot of honey in the hive. You see a lot of brood. You put your honey supers on and they will fill it. This is where a wild colony differs from a managed colony in that they don't have the room to expand and put honey in the supers because they, they have a fixed space so they'll swarm more often. Then as the bees enter fall the queen starts getting shut down so she starts being pushed down and what happens is where I have that empty comb there is where brood is hatching out and instead of there actually being empty comb in there they won't they don't allow the queen to lay in there they put honey in there instead so that it can shut the queen down to the bottom hive body and she'll lay her brood as, as she has to and eventually we will be back to the winter example so the brood is now shut down to the bottom of the hive body I have honey above and this is of course an ideal situation for bees going into winter Keep in mind here though that this is the ideal situation. This is a dynamic process that goes you know, from fall to winter to spring to summer. It's a cyclical thing and you can have smaller patches of brood, you could have larger patches of brood. You could have warm winters where they use more resources or cold winters where they use less resources. But, but it's also harder on the bees. So this is a dynamic process and basically you just have to locate the brood cluster and once you found the brood cluster you need to find the highest concentration of eggs that's where you will find the queen. Before we actually delve into the hive let me show you a few things here. Here are some eggs laid by the queen. The queen first lays the egg. The egg is in that state for about three days until it hatches into a larva. Here's another photo of some eggs and these are on black super frames or black whack, uh, plastic so it's easy to see the eggs. Here they have hatched into larvae. Now these are very young larvae and the, yarga, the larvae actually grow bigger and bigger. This is a brand new colony and that's why you can see the eggs and the larvae right next to each other, but those are very young larvae. This next photo is of a diseased hive that I found that I extracted. It's a wild colony. It has European fowl brood, but it also shows a good photo of a healthy larva right next to a diseased larva. The white, pearly white, larva is healthy, the brownish one is not. I included this photo to show you that you have larva, you have eggs, and you have cat brood, and actually some open cells revealing the pupa inside, all in the same frame, or comb in this case, and that is exactly what you do not want to see. This is a bad shotgun brood pattern that has European fowl brood and is uh, a very unhealthy hive. Finally, after the larvae pupates, the cell is capped over with this uh, wax capping that's porous and that is why it appears brown. And this is the final stage. Now you will not find a queen on a solid frame like this of cat brood. You will find the queen laying eggs. So if you're looking at cat brood and you progress down through the hive to larva and then to eggs, you're getting closer and closer to the queen. Up to this point I've just been talking about frames of eggs larvae or cat brood but in this case you can see that there are cat brood on the outside empty cells on the inside so what happens is a queen starts to lay in the center of a frame typically and then spirals outward so you have just like that they spiral outward and then what happens is the the bees since she started in the center are older and they hatch out sooner so you have empty cells in the center and cat brood on the outside on a transition comb you can also have eggs next to larva where you would have larva in the center and eggs on the outside of the frames that's also a transition frame a comb like this simply means that your 23 day cycle has ended new bees are hatching out and the queen has gone back and started laying eggs in the center of the frame just like she's supposed to however if you happen to see a frame like this which is solid cat brood surrounded by honey you will not find the queen on that frame there's nowhere for her to lay. Since an egg lasts for three days before it hatches into larva, if you see eggs, 
the queen is usually nearby. The higher the concentration of eggs, the more likely the queen will be there. Okay, so we're gonna open this hive up and we're gonna try to systematically look for the queen. So the first thing that you do when you open the hive is you kind of try to take note of where the cluster is. Drop some of my smoker fuel in there. So you give them a little bit of smoke, let them know you're here. There's also a vent hole. I could have smoked them through that in the back, but they seem to be fine. I always shake off my inner covers, by the way, so that when I put them back on, I can put them on uh, without worrying about it and I don't smash any bees. So you can see that the cluster is right in the middle. Can you see that, William? Mm -hmm. That's where the main cluster of bees tends to be. This is honey over here. This looks like some empty comb and there's honey over here. So give them a little smoke. Again, principles of working a beehive, you don't want to pull out a frame that has the queen on it. So in looking at this hive, there are bees over here, but not very many. I could pull this one out or this one, but the cluster is fairly close to that, but there's nothing over here. And this frame looks like it'd be easy to take out. So pick one of the outside frames, give yourself a little bit of room. You see that hornet just go inside? And then pull a frame out. And all you're doing right now is giving yourself room. Now this is a chock full frame, so it's a heavy frame. Very heavy, but it's, you see how it comes right up. That's because the bee space in this hive is good. This thing is full of honey. We also, this time of year, there's that hornet. We also, this time of year, don't wanna be in the hive too long. We don't want robbers to be attracted. So now I'm gonna go straight for the cluster. The cluster is right here, right here. They're at the top, but we know they've got honey on the sides. I'm gonna go straight for the cluster now because I've given myself room. And to, if you wanna give yourself a little more room, one way is to go on the end bars here and you can push out a little bit. I had given myself enough room, but that, you know, it's always good to have a little more. And I'm gonna go straight for this frame right here because it's kind of the middle of the cluster. But you give yourself plenty of room. You pull that frame out so there's plenty of room on either side so that you can pull it out without rolling any bees and without hurting the queen. So I'm looking at the frame now and I'm looking and I see some eggs and I see some larvae and I see some cat brood and they're all, it's a pretty tight pattern uh, it looks like it's in the middle of a cycle. You have to take that into consideration. But since there are eggs on this frame, the queen could very possibly be on this frame. But it doesn't mean she is. Here I see more eggs. But I don't see the queen yet. And there are eggs on both sides. So it's hard to tell right now which way you want to go to find the queen. What I did see was, to me, more eggs facing closer to me than on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and go, come this way, but at this point, it's just a uh, shot in the dark. She could be either way. In the winter, which is what it is right now, it's harder to tell because they kind of move with their resources. In the spring or summer, it's easier to tell where the queen is because she will always lay thousands of eggs in a day in the same area. So with three days from that point, those eggs will have hatched and you'll see eggs where she's closer to where she's at and she follows a more predictable pattern. This is where the systematic approach comes into hand. First you find the brood nest, that's essential. Second, what you're looking for is on the two sides of the comb, look at, evaluate each side of the comb and find the side that has the most young brood on it, small larva and eggs, and move in that direction. If it's towards you, then move towards you. Any frame with young brood or eggs may contain the queen, so take a look briefly for The queen will usually be near the highest concentration of eggs that you find. And lastly, if there is no brood, the queen is usually found right in the center of the cluster or near it. If it's the middle of winter, there may be no brood. Other than that, if you can't find a brood and you can't find a queen, they're likely queenless. It's always prudent to check a second time a week or two later, though. Now, the queen is on this frame, so you can see that I've taken out three total frames. 
and I got the queen already. So I'm going to turn the queen, I'm going to turn the frame over to William's side real quick after I find her again. She might have crawled over to that side because she was crawling towards the bottom. She's got a blue dot on her. And she's at the top, so she crawled around on the frame to right there. There's the queen. See her? Right there. Do you see my finger? William? No, I don't. You see her? Yeah, I got her. You got her. Focus on that. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's the queen. Dark carniolan queen. The cluster is pretty tight. You can see that there are a lot of cat brood real tightly clustered together, but you can see she's also expanding. It's a little spotty, but for this time of year, that's not bad at all. You can see her kind of looking around. Sometimes when you come into a hive and they're this close to the surface and you give them a little smoke, it disturbs her, but she's just kind of going about her business looking for eggs to lay in on, on this frame. So uh, I'm gonna put these frames back exactly as I saw them, but you can see it's a blue queen carniolan, so we can check that in the future when we unite that other colony with it. And I'm shooting two videos at the same time here. I'm shooting a video on uniting colonies and I'm shooting a video on finding a queen uh, right now. So that's why some of it may not make sense to you. But now we have a, a little bit of a, a problem. Uh, we have to get this frame back in the hive with that queen on it safely. She just crawled around to my side of the frame. Did you see that, William? Probably, I don't know. Okay, I like her being on this side. Looks like she's going back and forth now. She must have went back to this side. Yep, she's crawling back up on this frame. I like her being on the side nearest the frame that I'm putting in, but in this case it's not. So this frame is a perfectly pulled frame. It's all nice and flat, and the one that goes next to it is too, and she's right in the middle of the frame. She keeps going between this side and this side, so it's safe for me with her in the middle of the frame to put this in. The only problem would be is if there was burr comb down here, and, and down below, if there were burr comb there, this would not be a situation where you want to put this frame back in the hive with her crawling around down there because you could smash her down on the bottom. But having a, a hive that has great bee space where there's no burr comb built up, perfect bee space between the two hive bodies, it's safe to do it in this case. She's back up here now. So I'm gonna put her back in the hive and I'm gonna do this fairly quickly because I don't want her to move too far before I put the next frame in. Because I do not want to smash her. You put the frame in and then you go towards her. And she's in there safe now. So now I'm just gonna move these frames back over here and close these guys up. And then I'm gonna talk for just a second about finding a queen. This one was relatively easy. It's usually this easy. It really is not a hard thing to do to learn how to find a queen so long as you know what you're looking for. Okay, so that's a systematic process on, of a way to find a queen. This queen is marked. I try to mark all my queens, not for identification purposes, but for uh, to know when they swarm or when they requeen for whatever reason. Um, hope that helps you get into a hive and look closer, find out what the, you know, exactly where the queen is. It's an easy process to look for a queen in a, in a hive of bees. And the more you practice and the more you use that systematic approach to doing it, the easier it'll be for you to find a queen. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.